Hello and welcome to this episode of Cloudbytes TV. This is the fourth in our Lightning Web Components series. It's the one um, that quite honestly I'm most excited about because uh, it does the coolest thing as far as I'm concerned. We're going to rewrite our report view component that we had in Aura before and we're going to have it now in a Lightning Web Component. So again, card should pop up now that gives you a link to go and watch that uh, previous video if you haven't seen it before, where we take a report, we run it using the same Apex code uh, that you can see here on screen. All we're doing is retrieving a report, we're uh, running it, and then we're serializing into JSON what we get back and returning that to the page. Okay, nothing different there, but if you watch that previous video, you'll see how we had to uh, manipulate the DOM and do things in a, in a slightly different way to get the report to show up. Um, you know, third-party libraries are one of the things that you really, you know, if you can incorporate them into your, to your uh, Lightning Web Components, you can really start to do some amazing stuff. So let's see what we can do here. So the HTML for our Lightning Web Component to display this is seven lines long. It's fantastically small. You can see here we have the template. Again, just letting us know that this is a component we can reuse. We have our Lightning card with our title, our standard icon again, we have our div, and then we have a canvas element, which has a class called donor. Uh, that allows us to identify it. And then we have this little directive here, this attribute LWC colon DOM equals manual. And this is the key thing about this component, because what that is doing is it is telling us and telling the browser that you can append children to this element, okay? And what it's doing is, it's ensuring that the rest of our um, component is safe, that we're not letting um, the DOM be manipulated by anything and everything, which is one of the, the big security things that our Lightning Locker Service and Salesforce do for us. But we're saying for the third party library that wants to append some children and wants to update the page, we're gonna let you do that, but only for this item here, okay? Really, really useful to know. Um, and it's incredible that, you know, what is uh, you know just a small snippet of text you know really changes the way in which your page runs and acts. So let's now jump over to the JavaScript file uh, and let's have a look at you know what is going to be the longest file I think we've had to date. Um, I think it might actually be a little bit shorter than the one we had previously, but there's a lot more going on in this. So again, importing our Lightning element, we're going to import load script from the Lightning bundle, and then we're going to import chart.js, which is um, a resource that we've loaded in. Okay, and we've got that as a static resource, we called it chart, and that's how we load that. And then we have our run report method from our Apex controller. Now let's start going through the, uh, the class here and seeing what we've got. So firstly, we have our chart, which is just a property, and whether or not that's initialized, okay? And we're gonna use those as we go through. Second of all, we have our rendered callback method. And this is one of those um, lifecycle hooks that we can, you know, just, tick into and allows us to know that we can run through and update the DOM when the component's loaded, okay? So when we've rendered the component on the screen, we're gonna just see if it's initialized. If it is, we're just gonna return, okay? And we're gonna just do nothing. If it isn't uh, initialized, if chart.js isn't initialized, we're gonna go away, set that value to true here on line 14, and then we're gonna call the load script method. And load script was the one we had here for the platform resource loader. And that is going to pass in this as the context for it. So this class. And it's going to import our chart.js library. When that has been imported, again, load script is, uh, returns a promise. We're going to handle that promise. And then what we're going to do is we're going to run our report and we're going to return run report. And because we know run report, it's an Apex method that is being called by Lightning Web Components. It therefore, when called in this way, when called in line, is gonna return a promise, we can do this. And that's gonna just chain those promises together, which is really nice, rather than us having lots and lots of callbacks. We then have the results come through, and what we're gonna do is gonna pass that JSON data into a property called results data. Now I'm using the let keyword here because I only want this scoped to within this method. And um, if you're not familiar with that, there's loads of resources on JavaScript out there on the web where you can read all about what that's doing. 
Okay. We're then uh, having a return data array, a label data array. We're just initializing them as empty. And then we're going through all of our data. And what we're doing is we're saying for all of the groupings we have, push the label of that grouping on there, set the uh, get the key from that, and then push the results on there. And this is the same thing we did before in our previous uh, Aura controller, or, um, Aura JavaScript controller, in fact, where we're going away and just processing. And this is the return data from our report, okay? And we're just processing that data, and what we're doing is we're getting the labels out, and we're getting the aggregate results out. Nice and easy for us. We then got a config object we're creating, tells us what type of chart we're creating, creates our data set with our return data, gives it a label for the data set, gives uh, labels for our data as well, and then have some options on there about how it's responsive and how to animate. Nothing crazy in there, that's just some chart.js configuration. And then finally, we have our context here. And this is really where all of the stuff, all of the magic happens. And all we're doing is we're saying this dot template, so which is our lightning uh, co uh, component, lightning web component, I'm going to select the canvas, um, the canvas element with the donut class. We're going to get its context in 2D, and we're going to pass that into our chart.js. And what we're going to say is we're going to give it that context, give it that config, go away and create a chart, and it will draw the chart for us. Not too difficult, not too hard, but again, it's taking a live report and displaying it for us. It's really, really quite clever. So let's hop over to the browser again, and you can see it here rendered already. I'm going to refresh the page. Um, just so you know, all I've been doing is going in to the page builder and dragging and dropping the component on there. To ensure you do that, you just have to make sure it's exposed. Nothing crazy about that. Um, and we can see it's rendered really nicely, and when we refresh, yeah, it animates out really, really pretty. We can see the values there as well. Um, and yeah, that's just pulling live data from a report we have, our opportunity stage report, which is the same as the one before. It's displaying that data out there for us. But notice how quick and responsive that is as well and how easy it is to use. Yeah, I'm, again, more and more impressed about the performance boosts we're getting with Lightning Web Components, but just how easy is that to do? You know, if we go back to the code, you know, yes, there's a bit of processing we got to do here from the report, um, but aside from that, you know, the biggest amount of code is setting up the configuration object uh, for us. So nothing too difficult there. So I hope you found this one interesting. Um, this is, you know, it's a weird one because despite the fact I think it's doing the coolest thing, which is running a report um, synchronously and getting the data, it's doing it really, really quickly, displaying that back for us um, and putting it on a screen with a nice chart library. So quick and easy for us to work with, quick and easy for us to use. Um, hope you have enjoyed it. If you have any comments about this, please leave them below. Uh, tell me if you've been using Lightning Web Components, if you've seen any performance upgrades um, and speed boosts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like. Please remember to subscribe to get the next video um, and get notified about it, which is when we're gonna have our account info component and we're gonna have an event that fires as well. I'm gonna talk a little bit about how events work and the two different types of events that you can have within Lightning Web Components, okay? That's gonna be the final one in our series. Um, I might extend the series with a couple of others where we talk about different things, but in terms of migration, we're you know, three components in. It's been really easy so far. Um, everything's looking good and running really well. So uh, hope you've enjoyed it, and I look forward to uh, seeing you and talking to you on the next video. Thank you very much again for watching.